Let's suppose that we have an n by n matrix and we are wondering if we can diagonalize this matrix. Then what we need to do is we compute the characteristic polynomial, which is P of lambda equal to the determinant of A minus lambda I. And then we find the roots of this polynomial. And let's suppose that we have some roots. These are the complex and real roots. These are called the eigenvalues. The roots of these polynomials are the eigenvalues of the matrix. We consider the matrix A minus lambda 1, the identity, and here A minus lambda K, the identity. And then we will consider the null of these matrices. And then uh, we find a basis for this. Let's suppose that here we have B1, 1, and B1, let's say, L sub 1. And here we have BK1, and here we have BK L sub K. L sub 1 is the dimension of null of A minus lambda 1, the identity, and so on here. L sub K is the dimension of A minus lambda K, the identity. Remember that these spaces are called the AM spaces. These are the eigen spaces. And then what we have is that if the sum of these dimensions, if L1 plus Lk is equal to N, the dimension of the matrix, then we can diagonalize the matrix. Otherwise, we cannot diagonalize the matrix. Then that's the theorem. And in the case that this sum is equal to N, then what we can do is we can consider P equal to the matrix with these columns B1, 1, B1, L sub 1, and then you write the next one and the next one until you get to this, which is BK1, BK, L sub K, and then here. Uh, since this is true, this would be an n by n matrix. And something that we can check is that this matrix has an inverse, and then the diagonalizing happens like this. We have that the matrix A is just P times D times P inverse, where D is the matrix lambda 1, and then you write lambda 1. How many times you write lambda 1? L sub 1 times. But this is L sub 1, the dimension of this eigen space associated with lambda 1. And then you keep going. And here you write lambda k, lambda k. And how many times you write this? You write L sub k times. And then this is a diagonal matrix. And then we can check that. A is equal to P times D times P inverse. Let's see an example. Let's suppose that we want to diagonalize this matrix. Then we compute the characteristic polynomial, which is the determinant of 4 minus lambda, negative 18, 8, 1, negative 1 minus lambda, 1, 2, 6, negative 2 minus lambda. And we can do this as 4 minus lambda times the determinant of negative 1 minus lambda, 1, 6, negative 2 minus lambda, minus negative 18 times the determinant of 1, 2, 1, negative 2 minus lambda, plus 8 times uh, 1, negative 1 minus lambda, 2, 6. And then if, if you simplify all of this, you will get negative lambda Q plus lambda square plus 14 lambda minus 24. 
And then we have to solve the equation d is equal to zero. And I'm not going to do this process here, but we can check that this equation has as roots lambda one equal two, lambda two equal negative four, and lambda three equal three. Uh, then once we have these numbers, which are called the eigenvalues, we need to compute the eigenspaces. Then let's say for lambda one equal two, then we compute the null of this matrix. We consider this matrix, which is uh, four minus two is two, negative 18, eight, one, negative two minus two is negative three, one, two, six, negative two minus two is negative four. This is the matrix A minus two times the identity. And then we compute a basis for the null of this. Then essentially we are solving this system, two x one minus eighteen x two plus eight x3 equals 0, x1 minus 3 x2 plus x3 equals 0, 2x1 plus 6 x2 minus 4 x3 equals 0. But then we do row reduction, and then when we do row reduction of the augmented matrix, we get the matrix 1, 0, negative 1 half, 0, 0, 1, negative 1 half, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which means that this system is equivalent to the system x1 minus 1 half of x3 equals 0, x2 minus 1 half of x3 equals 0, and from here we get that x3 is free, and x1 and x2 are basic, that means that to find the basis, we write x1, x2, and x3 equal to x1 is one half of x3, x2 is one half of x3, and since x3 is free, we just write x3, and that means that this null space is just x3 times uh, one half, one half, and one, and therefore a basis for the null space is the vector uh, one half, one half, and one. And then we need to do the same for uh, lambda two equal negative four. Let's do that. Let's say for lambda two equal negative four. Then we consider the matrix A minus negative four times the identity, which is the matrix eight, negative 18, eight, one, negative two minus negative four will be positive two. And then we compute the null of this matrix, which is the same as the null of the matrix that you get when you do row reduce. And then if we do row reduce of this matrix, we get the matrix 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. That means that to compute the null, we have to solve this system. x1 plus x3 equals 0, x2 equals 0. Notice that here x3 is free, and x1 and x2 are basic, then we find a basis by solving the system in parametric vector form. x1 is negative x3, x2 is 0, and x3 is free. Then we just write x3, and this is x3 times negative 1, 0, 1. That means that a basis for the eigenspace of lambda 2 is the vector negative 1, 0, 1. And then finally, we need to do uh, lambda 3. For lambda 3 equal 3, we consider the matrix A minus 3 times the identity, which is the matrix 4 minus 3 is 1, 
negative 18, 8, 1, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4, 1, 2, 6, negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Then we need to compute the null of this matrix, but the null of this matrix is the same as the null of the matrix that you get when you do row reduction, and that matrix is 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, negative 1, half, 0, 0, 0. And to find the null of this matrix, we have to solve this system. Okay. x1 minus x3 equals 0, x2 minus 1 half of x3 equals 0. Notice that again, x3 is free and x1 and x2 are basic. Therefore, to find a basis for the null of this matrix, we solve this in parametric vector form x1 is equal to x3, x2 is one half of x3, and x3 is 3, then we just write x3, and this is x3 times 1, 1 half and 1, and that means that the a basis for the eigenspace of lambda 3 is the vector 1, 1 half and 1. In this case, notice that L1 is 1, L2 is 1, and L3 is 1. We needed one vector here, one vector here, and one vector here. And we have that 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, which is the di dimension of this matrix. This is a 3 by 3 matrix. That means that this matrix can be diagonalized. And the way to diagonalize it is like this. A is equal to P times D times P inverse, where P is the matrix 1 half. 1 half, 1, negative 1, 0, 1, and 1, 1 half, 1, and D is the matrix, that, that this one is the one that goes with 2, then we write 2 here, 0, 0, this eigenvector, it goes with negative 4, and this eigenvector goes with 3. We can check that if we compute the inverse of this matrix and we multiply P times D times P inverse, that gives us the matrix A. In this case, this matrix can be diagonalized.